is a tunnel, and machinery inside that tunnel sends beams of energy in a vast circle. Now the particle accelerator altered the weight of one electron and therefore sh destroyed our universe and shifted us into the universe that's directly next to it, and therefore things are different in this universe. Rumour has it that the big brains over at CERN, Europe's top-notch science lab, have cracked open a portal to another dimension. Yeah, you heard it right. Here's the thing though, as thrilling as it sounds, it's not like we're about to bump into alternate versions of ourselves or anything. I know, I know, bummer. But don't go anywhere because we're going to dive deep into the truth behind this portal and give you the lowdown on what's really going on at CERN. Trust me, by the end of this, reality will seem even cooler than your wildest sci-fi dreams. So you see, CERN is home to this ginormous machine called the Large Hadron Collider, or the LHC. This 27km ring buried deep underground is like a particle superhighway. It sends protons zooming in opposite directions near light speed and smashes them head on. The collision shatters these protons into even smaller particles, like quarks and gluons. By watching these mini Big Bangs, scientists hope to uncover the secrets of the universe. Mind-blowing, right? Now you may be wondering how all this ties into our story. Well, buckle up because we're about to take a deep dive into the quantum realm. In the crazy world of quantum physics, opening a portal is a nifty way of saying that scientists have found a way to explore the realm of new physics. Realms that venture beyond the known boundaries of our current understanding. So here's the deal. You've heard of the standard model in physics, right? It explains three of the four big fundamental forces in the universe, comprising electromagnetic, weak and strong forces, plus all the tiny particles we've discussed so far. Well, the standard model may be just the tip of the iceberg. CERN has found that a particle called the muon, think of it as a beefy electron, about 200 times heavier, and it isn't playing by the rules. When they sent these electrons whirling through a magnetic field in the G2 experiments, these muons began wobbling more than what the standard model said was okay. And this could be a big hint that there might be unseen particles or forces acting behind the scenes. If this is true, then we're talking about a revolution in physics. A whole new era where we uncover particles and forces that we haven't even dreamed up yet. We might even stumble upon new technology so advanced, it would seem like magic to us now. Now, isn't that muon story just wild? Now that you know what the whole portal fuss is about, let's uncover why creating a portal is nearly impossible. Einstein's theory of space and time doesn't completely rule out the possibility of portals, those hypothetical bridges through the fabric of space-time. But there's a roadblock, though the rigidity of space itself. Space is a tad bit stubborn, and the energy required to reshape space would be colossal. To create a wormhole big enough to walk through, you'd need energy equivalent to a planet. Not just any planet, but a massive one, like Saturn. Even the folks at CERN with their generous power budget can't conjure up that kind of energy. Tapping into all of Earth's energy reserves wouldn't be enough to make a small hole for us to walk through. Well, if we can't make a portal big enough to walk through, let's explore what happens if we scale things down. What if we wanted to make a portal that's, say, the size of a dot? Surely that must be possible, right? Here's the deal, though. Even to craft a teeny-weeny portal that's the size of an atom, we would still need more energy than what CERN could possibly offer. Imagine trying to squeeze the energy of a speeding freight train spread across a 15-mile circular tube into a teensy-weensy box the size of an atom. Sounds tough, doesn't it? Trust me, it's even tougher than it sounds. What CERN can actually do with its beams isn't even in the same ballpark. But for the sake of argument, let's imagine we could make an atom-sized portal. Guess what the next problem is? You got it. We wouldn't be able to control it. Picture an atom with a lot more mass than usual. It wouldn't stick around to say hello. It'd either dive straight into the Earth or zip off into outer space at the speed of light. And no walls, no matter how strong, would be able to hold it back. So it seems that our grand portal dreams, whether door-sized or dot-sized, are a bit more complicated than we thought. But hey, what if we move to another dimension? Here's a little something to tickle your brain. How we perceive dimensions is a matter of perspective. Now let me walk you through a simple example. Imagine you're standing on a vast, flat football field at night under the brightest full moon. To you, the field appears two-dimensional. You can move forward and backward, left and right, but there's no up and down, at least not without some serious digging or a jetpack. 
Now imagine a tiny ant walking across the same field. For the ant, this world is definitely three-dimensional. It can move left and right, forward and backward, just like you. But it can also dig down into the soil, or climb up blades of grass. To the ant, our 2D football field is a full-blown 3D universe. But let's add another twist. Imagine a fourth dimension, one you can't see or feel. We're not aware of it because we're not equipped to perceive this extra dimension, much like how we'd fail to notice the 3D world of the ant on our 2D football field. Now let me give you an example that will help you understand the concept of portals and dimensions, and how all we need is unlimited energy to stretch the fabric of our perceived reality. Remember how the kids in Hawkins, Indiana stumble upon the Upside Down, a creepy parallel universe that exists alongside their own? They needed to find portals to cross over, but in reality, if there are extra dimensions out there, we don't need a spooky gateway, we just need a ton of energy. Just like the kids in Stranger Things could move through their familiar town in three dimensions, they could go left or right, forward or backward, and up or down, with some help from stairs or bikes. They couldn't perceive or move in the dimension of the upside down. It was a whole new direction, one they couldn't access without the portals created by the Mind Flayer. In our case, if there are extra dimensions, we don't need a Mind Flayer or spooky portals to access them. Instead, we need an incredible amount of energy to break free from the forces keeping us bound in our usual three dimensions. And while I'd love to say we can zip into these extra dimensions just like Eleven and her friends, currently it's a no-go. If moving into these dimensions was easy-peasy, we'd see particles shimmying into these extra dimensions post-collision all the time. So for now, while we're stuck in our familiar three-dimensional world, we'll keep the dream alive. Who knows, maybe one day we'll uncover our very own Upside Down. Until then, we'll keep exploring the universe we know, one mind-bending discovery at a time. So stick around, science is definitely stranger and way cooler than fiction.